Uh, Hilary Ben, Chris Vince, um, what brings you to Harlow today? Well, we're campaigning for the local elections. Obviously, all the seats are up because of the boundary changes. And we're hoping that we might be able to take back control of the council, having lost it in 21. I mean, a lot of people have been out today because they're at work, which is a good thing. But I had a very interesting conversation with one woman who said, I've never voted Labour before. I'm not sure how I'm going to vote this time. And I think that kind of sums up the, the mood I find around the country. Because she said, the government isn't doing very well. And I think people have had enough of them. I think there is a mood. It's time for a change. And our job is to win people's trust and confidence. But time for a change, why? Well, for 14 years of government, when I was in the last Labour cabinet with uh, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, when we left office, waiting lists for the NHS were at a record low, public satisfaction with the NHS was at a record high. This is my portable graph, and since then, it's gone like that. We've got huge waiting lists, low satisfaction. So, we're committed to two million more appointments to begin to break the back of the backlog. That is practical politics that meets the needs of... And that's important, Chris Vince, that it, you, because I think the Tories think they can just say Labour has no plan, and the more you say it, you can get away with it. But it's important for you every single day in Harlow and all across the country to say, we have a plan and detail it. Yeah, absolutely, and that applies both locally and nationally. And, you know, as we say, you know, we hear that this, this from the Tories. I think it's a desperation for them to say that Labour haven't got a plan. You only have to look on the Labour's website to see we've got five very clear missions for, for national office. We have some uh, five missions for uh, local office, and we are, you know, every day out listening to residents and talking to residents about what those plans are. But as I've always said to you, of course, um, politics is, isn't just about telling people what we're going to do, but it's actually about listening to, to residents and understanding what their issues are. And, you know, Hilly made a really good example there of one resident. We've had that a lot today, and people concerned about, about public services, about the NHS, about schools, and they really want to engage and, and talk to us about that. So I think it's hugely important that as local politicians and national politicians, we're out listening to residents all year round, every day and understanding the, the issues they face because I think the worst thing that politicians can do is live in that bubble and not actually you know, understand what the issues and people are really facing. Um, can I ask you uh, Mr Ben that um, as an undergraduate at Stirling University in 1983 I saw your father speak. Did you? And about arguments for socialism is there still a place? Is there a place for socialism in the Labour Party here in 2024? Oh goodness yes because you know, Labour founded the National Health Service. Now you couldn't, uh, when people say, well, what is socialism? Well, what are Labour values? What are Labour principles? Look at the NHS. He came back from the war. Uh, he just qualified as an RAF pilot and they had discussions on the troop ship returning. He had to go to the commanding officer to get permission to discuss politics. The people in that election picked up the two most powerful weapons in a democracy, a pencil and a piece of paper. And they did this in their millions. And that's why all these years later, when we go to the doctor or we have an operation, we don't have to pay. Now, we all contribute through a progressive taxation system. And that, uh, that is probably the most significant achievement of Labour in government. But there's plenty of others, the minimum wage, the winter fuel payment, and the commitment to awaking. When children go to school, if they're hungry, how can they learn? They can't. Breakfast club in every primary school. Now, these are things, practical Labour policies that we are committed to. And it's a particular pleasure for me to be back in Harlow, because when I was about this high, my brother and I used to come and stay with a family friend who lived in St. John's Avenue in Old Harlow, and we played football. She'd drop us off in her car. We'd play football on the pitch at Churchgate Street. And somewhere in a dusty box, and I have pictures of me and my brother kicking a football around. So I have very, very fond memories of old Harlow and new Harlow from all those years ago. Thank you very much. And finally, finally, Chris, just as uh, yourself, um, things like voter ID, getting people out to vote, that's a big challenge as well, isn't it? Actually, you're here on a, on a, on a morning, a Thursday morning, but getting people out to vote. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, there's two, two things there, isn't it? He's talking about local government, explaining why local government matters and the difference that it can make. And we know that's been a challenge over the last four, uh, 14 years because of the huge cuts from central government and two councils like Harlow, which are having a huge impact on the services we're able to provide. But obviously, local democracy is really, really important. It's explaining that to residents. But you're right to raise the issue of, of, of voter ID. You know, I spoke to a number of residents uh, across the town who are concerned about that they haven't, uh, that they've got the right ID. Some of them haven't got 
mobile ID. And again, as we discussed many a times, you know, this was a problem that the government solved that wasn't a problem. You know, there wasn't an issue of voter food fraud. There was a, you know, obviously political inclination for the government or the Conservative government to bring in the voter ID, and it will put some people off voting. And we need to encourage them to say that actually, and the point that Hillary made is so so important. Actually, the most powerful thing you can do over the next year, both the local election and the general election, is vote. To cast your vote and have a say over how the country and how the town are, town are, town are run. And actually, we've seen over the last 14 years a, a Tory government have completely mismanaged the country. We've seen the impact that's had on people in Arlo. And actually, you know, the emphasis we've got to be saying to people is please come out, use your voice, have your voice heard. Obviously, we want to vote Labour, but have your voice and vote. I couldn't put it any better.